AMD's third-gen Ryzen mobile processors has gotten really popular on premium mid-tier laptops in 2019. That's because they have decent power efficiency and better graphics performance than its Intel competition that you can even do some lightweight creative tasks and gaming on it. So this is the ASUS ZenBook 14, which is technically the second Ryzen mobile processor laptop that we review in studio. Um, this is powered by a Ryzen 5 3600U CPU. And look at this premium build quality. It really looks expensive, but to be honest, this will cost you less than 3000 ringgit. But here's the thing. Should you put your trust on Team Ray when it comes to productivity tasks? I'm Warren VPL Gadget TV. This is my review of the ASUS ZenBook 14 UM431. Now, you really can't find any colors that's more unique than the ZenBook 14. Unlike most laptops in this range that comes with either a black, gold, or silver color finish, this one gets a unique color that ASUS calls it Utopia Blue. The smooth chamfered edges around the machine to give it a premium feel, the loudspeaker grill spots a honeycomb style design, and the cooling vents are positioned at the back. And last but not least, its 1.39 kg weight gives you a real pleasure on transporting it around. A few things here are standard as a ZenBook, which includes an ergo lift hinge that tilts the laptop to a better typing position, a nano edge slim bezel display with a good webcam position, and a trackpad with a reliable fingerprint reader. The loudspeakers are the most impressive ones I've ever heard on a sub 3000 ringgit laptop. It has two bottom and top firing speakers tuned by Harman Kardon. Sound quality is actually pretty close to a MacBook, and it sounds really loud when maxed out. The laptop's display is a full HD IPS panel with 8 bit color reproduction, which is also something uncommon on laptops on the same price range and offers a great viewing experience. Though brightness is pretty standard at 300 nits, you can definitely do casual creative graphics work on the display. I've always been impressed with port selection on ZenBooks, and this time, ASUS managed to include a SD card slot, which is a rarity on Ultrabooks and extremely convenient if you are a creative user. The USB-C port doesn't support power delivery charging, but thankfully supports USB 3.1 Gen 1 speeds. The ZenBook 14's keyboard is excellent, with great key travel and tactile. The trackpad, however, isn't great, but it isn't terrible as there is a slight lag in its tracking performance. The ZenBook 14's internals can be accessed by unscrewing these seven Pentelope security screws. I have no idea why ASUS used this kind of screws because this laptop is definitely upgradable in certain ways. All right, so let's just crack open these seven screws and get on with it. So once you have taken out all the screws, all you need to do is to just pry open over here and you can just basically lift up the casing just like this. All right, so this is the internals of the ZenBook 14. As you can see, the RAM is already soldered onto the motherboard and you can't upgrade the RAM at all. Here's the wireless card. You can upgrade that if you ever want to, if you find a better one. And this is the SSD, a pretty slim one as you can see. And ASUS has even had a heat sink right here to dissipate heat from the SSD. Pretty good job over there. So this is a SK Hynix 512 gigs uh, SSD. It runs on two lanes of PCIe that is Pretty decent, fast enough for everyday performance, but you can definitely upgrade this to a PCIe Gen 3 X4 SSD if you ever want to. So um, it has one single fan here, a pretty big fan. So cooling performance is actually pretty good on this one. And most of the time, this thing runs really silent and the fan rarely spins up unless you're gaming and all that. All right, so this is just a quick overview of the internals of the ZenBook 14. Unfortunately, which you can't upgrade the RAM at all, but on the bright side, storage here is definitely upgradable. With only 6GB of available RAM due to shared graphics memory, the ZenBook 14 can sometimes struggle when you have too many apps running in the background, especially when it comes to web browsing on Chrome. Switching between tabs will sometimes cause the page to reload. Back on my HP MV X360 review, I was able to demonstrate some lightweight gaming and the ZenBook 14 seemed to demonstrate slightly better performance. Though I wouldn't call 30 frames per second a playable frame rate and you will need to have graphics set to the lowest you can at least game when you feel like slacking off work. I've seen many of you concerned about thermals on AMD Ryzen laptops back on my HP MV X360 review. I'm happy to report that the ZenBook 14 has no issues on that, as idle temperatures remain around 36 degrees Celsius, while gaming will bring it up to 62 degrees Celsius, which is rather common. 
Asus claims up to 12.5 hours of usage on a single charge, which I didn't get to achieve there, but instead, I managed to get up to 7 hours on power saving mode and 60% of screen brightness. That's very impressive for a laptop that runs on an AMD Ryzen Marble CPU. Retaining at 2,999 ringgit, the Zenbook 14 falls under the competitive mainstream laptop category, where other brands are also offering laptops with the similar specs for probably almost the same price. But what's going to make you want to consider this machine would be its great hardware build and quality. Although it's really quite a shame that you can't upgrade the RAM on this laptop, but on the bright side, you could upgrade the storage of this device if you ever want to. And that alone already makes a great difference from the rest of the Ultrabooks out there. So that's it for my review of the ASUS ZenBook 14 UM431D. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Subscribe to our channel for more tech videos coming right up. Give us a thumbs up if you like what you saw, share this video. And thanks for watching this video for today. I'm Warren with KL Gadget TV and I'll see you in the next one.